Yo, this is Binky the Hunter. Today in How I Hunt, I'll be going over the ptarmigans. There's three types of ptarmigans in this game. There's the rock ptarmigan on Val de Bois, there's the willow ptarmigan on Hemmeldal, and there's the white-tailed ptarmigan on Timbergold Trails. And the rock ptarmigan, they uh, weigh, the weight is the score by the way, so that's the same. So they score between 440 and 640, the willow ptarmigan 430 to 810. And the smallest one is the white-tailed ptarmigan, 330 to 480 grams. Uh, there are no colors for the ptarmigans and no sand spray, so there's no way you can lure them towards you. And like all other bird species in this game, they have no sense of smell, so scent eliminator on the bottom is useless when you're hunting ptarmigans. Here we have the permitted ammo. You can use every bow in the game. You can use every crossbow in the game. You can use the 22, that's the pistol, or the Plinkington, the rifle. This is the 22 air rifle. You can also use that. The 17 HMR. And any type of shotgun. Here are some tips. Shotgun with birdshot is the easiest choice, I think. Then a 22 pistol is a very useful sidearm when you go hunting in the mountains or anywhere where there's ptarmigan. And yeah, the Plinkington is the same ammo, but this one is very light and like I said, it's a good sidearm and you can fit it in quite easily. Uh, the 17 HMR is a very nice one for when you want to shoot them at long range on the ground or something. Then that's your best choice, I would say. Then there's also that 16 gauge 9.3 drilling combination rifle. And that's actually also a good choice on the most maps when you're on Val de Bois or on Timbergold in the mountains and you have some big horns as well. You can shoot the big horns with the 9.3 ammo and you can switch to the to the shotgun to the bird shot if you get close to ptarmigan, so that's nice. And also I put a bow and a crossbow in there because many times when I'm hunting Ibex or the Bighorns again you come a group, across groups of ptarmigans, all of a sudden you get the spotting info and you're in the middle of them and it's very easy to pick one or two with the bow, so easy gems. Next there is a thing that most of you will know from the pheasants and the ducks and the geese for example. Uh, shot on the ground, you have two types of scores as you can see here. Shot on the ground, then the score has a G behind it. And shot in the air, it has an A behind it. When you're just shooting him for the fun, it doesn't matter. You both get your GMs, you both get your money. But when you're doing missions and competitions, mostly, mostly it's... Um, yeah, you have to shoot them from the air, otherwise it doesn't count. So keep that in mind. Okay, those were some of the basics. I'll go over the rest in the hunts. Uh, first, let's go to Timbergold Trails to find some white-tailed ptarmigans. And one thing I forgot to mention earlier, there's no uh, fur varieties or anything on the, on the ptarmigans, so only the common ones. Now let's go to Timbergold Trails and see if we can kind of find some ptarmigans. Okay, here we got the map of Timbergold Trails. I'm gonna start up here. This is also a good location because the ptarmigans only are in this area up here. And you find them here in this area as well, but better go up here. And I have tents up here, but if you don't have any tents, what's a good tip is you can go here, of course. That's also quite fast. Here you have the tunnels, you can fast travel and stuff. but. Starting here is also a good idea, because from here you can go to there, and here is also a tunnel entry, and that will uh, put you there when you fast travel through it. So from here you are close up to the mountains already. So if you don't have any tents, 
I would say start here and you can find ptarmigans right after you fast travel through this tunnel. Sometimes you even find them here, but like I said, best is this area up here. And the time by the way, I start at 11 o'clock on this one, or 12 o'clock mostly, also on Val de Bois, but that's mostly because the sun is up high and you don't have that many shadow sides on the mountain, so that's mostly behind that. I don't think the time matters much. Just don't go 5 or 6 o'clock or in the evening 5 or 6 o'clock because then it's getting too dark and you're making your, your life harder as necessary. So stick to the daytime. Okay, here we arrived at my tent. I'll show you on the map. This tent is where I started. And I want to show you my loadout. Um, I got a bow with me, I always take a bow, so but what's more important actually for the ptarmigans is a shotgun. And what I would advise here, the same as on Valderbois by the way, where you got a lot of ibex, is take a good rifle, because many times you'll spot big horn sheep here on Timbergold and ibex on Valderbois in the distance. and it's very nice when you can shoot them as well. So take a good rifle with a good scope and you should be all good. And then the camo, I got now I got the Alpine camo on. That works for excellent visual reduction versus all species in open mountain areas. So that works quite well with these ptarmigans also on Val de Bois again because those two both count as mountain areas but again there are parts of forest and there this camo doesn't work so that's a bit of a down part I think of all these 3D camos so. and further no other camo works against the ptarmigans except this one you also got outback camo and that has some reduction, scent, visual and sound against all species, so sometimes this is your best option. But now I'm going for this one. Next, how to find these guys. There's no colors and no scent spray, so you have to find them. And the only thing you have on them actually is the, you can hear them very well. You can hear the wing flapping from very far away. You can hear the, the sounds they make. And there's a big one, very close, female. Looks of it. But yeah, go find the sound, the wing flapping. You can hear that very far away, so. When you find that, follow that, and of course when you find the tracks you can also follow those. When you follow them you should hear the wing flapping at one point when you come close, so... But now I hear nothing, I hear some big horns, but no ptarmigans, so I will look around. And as you can see I started here, and I fast traveled to the tunnel that brought me right to here, so it's very nice. I might even go to the next tunnel. It gives you two free fast travels for yeah for nothing actually so but I bring you back when I when I find some ptarmigans I'm gonna ignore this female down here and bring you back when I when I find them what's that a bush <laughs> here you can hear birds Some flying in the distance, but there should also be some right here. I hear them chattering on the ground. And there's a big one sheep female, by the way, down here. Can I get on this rock? No, yes. It's 
Let's wait for a second and they start making noise again. Still hear them in that direction. But it doesn't sound like I came any closer, so. One down there. Oh, it's a rock. When you're running and you get close, sometimes it's a good idea to keep your weapon in hand. There went one, so it could be that his friends are also here. same as the pheasants, so some of them will spook and some of them will hide when you come close, so come on, it should be here somewhere, Ooh, there's another one that one's down and the other one's going, that's too far not even going to, I'm gonna try but <laughs> I'm never gonna hit, so But we got one. I think it was here. Female. That's a decent one. And it gives me 44 gems, so that's nice. That was how you can locate them by the sound. But I did notice when I was editing and I was listening to it without a headset, it's very hard to hear the sounds these ptarmigans make, so using a good headset might also be a very good tip in this tutorial. Uh, next, there is one more thing with these ptarmigans, they have nests, at least I call that nests, those are locations where they yeah, kind of gather, they form in groups and when you shoot them they all scatter, but they should all return to that point, so let's go to some recordings where I try to show that. Here I just went through the second tunnel, and here you can hear the ptarmigans already, and I see them now as well. And there they are. So we located them. And now what's smart, I think, is to watch them a little bit. These guys have nests. They land at a certain spot. And when you go there and you shoot one, they all scatter. But within two or three minutes, they should all return. Look, there on the ground are a lot on the ground. I think that should be a nest then. Let me see. See, there's a few on the ground. So Let's mark that. And what's the same with these guys as with the pheasants. This one's gonna spook here in front of me, but... The one's right there on the ground. I see one run already, two. But one stays. They should... Some of them should go down, like the pheasants do, so... said before I don't mind to shoot them on the ground so if that one wants to stay on the ground I'll shoot him and I think that's the location oh there's more see there's three on the ground four and when you get close they become harder to see Ooh. <laughs> uh, only a bit harder I have no idea where they are now Let's see. That was a miss. Hmm. 
Hmm. Now what I should do is find a rock here or something. There are no rocks here where I can lay on. That's too bad. But they should return. I hope I do some better shooting then. <laughs> Let's wait. I won't edit this, so you can hear when they start flying again. Now it's all quiet. And within 30 seconds or something, you can hear them come back. If this was the nest, by the way, otherwise I'm babbling BS, but... Let's see what happens. I think I found the nest. Oh, it landed, it landed right in front of me. That means I found the nest, probably. There's more coming, so this one we can shoot, right? Boom! There's one down. What's the other one? Oh, damn, damn, damn! It's a miss, I think. Yep. Panic that one. Nah, that's too far. But I think I found the nest now, so... Uh, where did it die? Come on, this works sometimes, running backwards, then you see the blue dome appear. When you're too close, it disappears, so... It can be really annoying. A male! 400. But 31 gems, so can add up quite fast. Let's just lay and wait here. I won't edit this part. So you can hear when they come flying back. Now it's quiet and at one point you hear the wings again and they shoot all come to this spot again, that's the nice thing about these nests. And I thought that all three ptarmigan species had those nests, but I was testing the rock ptarmigans a little bit and I had the idea they don't have that, so, but these do. And on Hemeldal I also had, yeah, I remember having a few times that they all came back to the same spot, so they also have nests, I would say. I hear wings, but... There are some on the ground in that direction as well, I hear them... Yeah... Making noises, <laughs> what do you call it? Here they come. All at the same time, so. But I hear them from several directions now. That one's the closest, I think. And then get up. Um, miss your first shot completely. Good thing I got a double barrel, otherwise, I would have looked like a noob. And now they all scatter again. And come back within the same time. <laughs> this is a bigger one. Uh, these are the white tail. They go up to... I don't even remember. I always mix them up. So I think 480 is the highest one you can get on these. So this is a very nice one. I'm actually thinking about taxidermizing one, but I'm not sure if I should take... take I don't think I should take these one. These are the smallest. So... Better go for the willow ptarmigan, I think, for in the lodge. But I'll wait some more. And I will edit this part out now, so... But they should return. And at one point, they are sick of this nest and they, they could go to another spot, but... For now, they will keep returning to this same spot and I can keep, <laughs> keep repeating shooting one at at a time. Man, I'm very lucky I can get two maybe, but not with the kind of shooting I was doing now, so... <laughs> I 
they come again. One from that direction. I didn't even see that one. What's the other one? <laughs> oh, we got a nice close up. He lands right there. <laughs> I shot him right in front of my feet. Nice. See, this can end up quite fast. So, harvest value 99.7. Okay. Come again. Hello. See, they come right back to you. So that's the point. And what I do mostly, by the way, is I lay down as long as possible, as you can see. And then the moment I want to shoot, I get up because sometimes you have to follow them a bit. And when you lay down, of course, you have, yeah, when you aim like this. You have a limited reach here, I can't look farther, so you can get in trouble like that. So get up when you take the shot. But I think I will execute these other ones since they're coming back, but I won't show the other ones because you get the point by now. Another mail. And that's another 30 gems. nice and that's why you should always take a good rifle when you're hunting here I think there was another male somewhere but it was small I think that was you Don't see anything else running oh, small right yeah here he is see what he scores not at high weight 165.6 that is decent okay those were the white tailed ptarmigans so the main thing about those guys I think is the nest that's really really nice to know if you find one of those you're all good you could see in the video they just come back to you so that's very nice and I have to be honest I don't hunt ptarmigans that much so I thought on Hemeldal they would also have nests, but I'm not 100% sure, so I'm gonna do some testing first, do my homework a little bit before I start babbling nonsense here and make a bad tutorial, so I'm gonna find out if they have nests on these as well. I do remember at one point I found a group at one of the frozen lakes and I shot about 7 or 8 of them on the same spot because they came back one at a time. So that was the same as the white-tailed ptarmigan. So let's go to Hemeldal. As if I haven't hunted Hemeldal enough lately, but let's go back to Hemeldal and see if we can find some ptarmigans. All right, this is Hemeldal, and what you should do for these ptarmigans is stay on the left side of the map. This side is where you find the ptarmigans this side you'll never find them so sponsor um, stay here if you don't have any tents I would advise start here and move towards this side you always find well always almost always find some ptarmigans here but also in this area I find a lot of ptarmigans so go to this area and find the wing flapping again so Okay, here we are on Hemeldal. I'll show you where I started. Right here. This valley, I find a lot of ptarmigans here mostly, so let's go check it out. And a fox. Hmm. Don't get that many fox over on this side of the map, but oh well, you're going in that direction anyway. And for my loadout, I got about the same loadout as last time. <clears throat> I got a shotgun, I got a bow, and I got a good rifle for long range. Only this time, of course, I'm set up for Hemeldal. And the clothing I wear is I just put on the hunting tweed that has no camo at all against these ptarmigans. So I could put on the Outback, but let's go for this one. 
and uh, now normally I advise not to run but I will just run until I hear ptarmigans because that's what we're looking for here the wing flapping or the, the squeaking sound and then try to find them and see if they have nests like the white-tailed ptarmigans do or if they just yeah spook scatter and you have to follow them what was that? Hmm. never mind bring you back when I find them here yeah, I ran for 180 meters I'm right at that valley here mostly you find some ptarmigans I said and I hear them over in that direction because they're far away but it should be somewhere in that direction so also a good thing look around a lot on high points that's what I use a lot on this map as well I see them they're right over there nice there they are very nice spot one from this range no yeah, I can. Nice. So, now let's just run there. <coughs> because again, they should go down like the pheasants do. And the other tarmigans. Most of them will. I saw some running already. But some will stay probably and yeah let's see if we can find something that uh, looks like a nest one stayed at least I can see one so you can actually just run up to them shoot them in the face and there were some more so let's see if this is a nest right away small one let's lay down here Hmm. Been waiting for a few minutes, but some birds flew by, but none came back here. So this is not a nest for sure. And let's see. I can hear them all around me actually. So now we're back to listening and following the sound. There's one flying right there. Is he going? It's too far. But I saw one more go in that direction, so let's follow him a, lit a little bit. And what's also a good thing, by the way, you see me running here all the time. What I mostly do is run for a bit and, yeah, maybe go to the next point of view where I have a little bit of. Uh, where I can overlook the surroundings a little bit and then wait lay down for 30 seconds or something because then they start chattering again and making noises so it can be useful because now it's all quiet well mostly I hear wing flapping but if they are close they would be quiet now they would be in hiding and within a few yeah, within a minute or something or 30 seconds they should start chattering again I hear some chattering some over there and some over there but none are close so let's go for them and run again and keep repeating this process run to the next vantage point and then Wait for 30 seconds to a minute. See if any start chattering near you. 
If not, yeah, go towards the direction where you think they are. Let's see. What's that? Yeah, now they start chattering again, and I'm getting closer. They should be right here. Right, they're right here in front of me, by the way. I saw them. Here they are. Nice. So what we're gonna do... I think is we're just gonna run to them. <laughs> Let's see if we can get one when they fly away. Or just shoot one when I walk in. Also an idea, where are you? Some, I hit that one or not? Sometimes they go up and down like crazy, so I think I missed that one. But yeah, that's how you find them. Ground shot. And this one looked like it went down, but I think... Yeah, they follow the, the outline of the, the ground when they fly. That makes them annoying. So with all these hilly things, they go up and down. And also, unlike the pheasants, the pheasants when they fly, they fly straight. And these guys, they make all kind of turns all the time. So it can be really tricky to hit them sometimes. But let's see. Let's hope we find a nest here. Pissed off a bear somewhere. Let's wait for a minute or so and see if they come flying back here or if I have to follow them again. Okay. All of a sudden, from several directions, I hear wings coming, so by the looks of it. We found the nest. <laughs> the rest could shoot scatter again. But let's test this some more. And six. I think they come back again sudden wings came from all directions so here comes the next one by the looks of it hey oh no I'm an idiot I got him <laughs> reload I keep forgetting to reload but yeah I think this proves these guys have nests as well. So that's very good to know. And like I said earlier in this video, I think the rock ptarmigans they don't have it, but I'm not sure. This is a small one. 14 gems. These go up to 810 grams, if I'm correct. So. Hmm, now they're going somewhere else, it looks like. They do at some point change their nest location, so it could be that. Or it could be I'm completely wrong and they don't have nests, so... It was just a coincidence that these two came back. So, we we'll have to test some more. Gonna look for another nest and bring you back when I find it. Bam. Ah, and another miss. I'm an idiot.
but I do think they come back here so mm, where is it it's a decent one now let's wait some more here let's see they came more here so Let's see, you know, they should come. Yeah, I hear the wing flapping. It sounds like they're coming this way again. That one's closest. out here already damn I spooked him that one spooked because those spooked here hey look at him run nice so this is the nest I guess land down here so and this is a ground shot again but I'm not doing any competitions or missions so it's all good I would say nice let's see if them some more come in close all of a sudden they all start flying so it's one down and it's two down nice so this is absolutely the nest I would say so that's a good thing to know because the nests really make Hunting ptarmigans more fun, I would say. When you find a nest, you can get quite a few of them in a short time. Nice. Back to my rock. Nice. Here they come again, I think. Come on, that's better. I was pressing the wrong button to get up, so... <laughs> well, I think there should be one more. At least. And here we go, I think. One, maybe even two. This one should be first, so let's get him. Oh, better do that first next time, but I think there's one more. But I think you get the point. Just like with the white tailed ptarmigans, these nests are ideal so try to find them and if you find a group just test it like this if they don't come back you know you're wrong and they also uh, after a while after this nest they will yeah move for two three maybe 400 meters and take the next one they fly for quite a bit but you can actually follow them and like I said earlier you can hear them quite well so So, with the willow ptarmigans, you should also look for the nest, just like with the white-tailed ptarmigans. But like I said earlier in this video, 
I think it's different with these rock ptarmigans. So here we are on Val de Bois. We're gonna go to Val de Bois next. <laughs> I'm not on Val de Bois, this is just a picture of course. And I'm gonna test if they also have nests. So yeah, let's go to Val de Bois and see what we can find. Okay, this is Val de Bois. And on this map, the ptarmigans uh, live together with the ibex. So ptarmigans and ibex you find up here in this area, in the dark area. And also down here, there's also mountains. But as you can see on my map, there's many climbing gears. So you can't just walk from the lodge up to here. Well, you can actually, but you have to go all the way around here. In the west of the map and then all the way to up here. Follow the border all the way and then you get up here as well. So you can actually get here without climbing gear, but it takes a very long time to go there. And that climbing gear, that's a bit of a different thing. I'll show a short tutorial on that climbing gear. I have to place one down here somewhere, so I'll do that and I'll make a short tutorial on that. So you can see how that works. Okay, in the shop, when you go to equipment and then consumables, you can find the climbing gear. It's a bit strange, I would call it a deployable, but <laughs> it's consumable, apparently, so fine. And I already got a lot, but I think I got them all installed, I'm not sure, but I just buy a few. Buy with GMs, they're not that expensive. So, let's go to the map. Okay, this is a map. I stole that from the Hunter Wiki. And here you can see exactly where you can put your climbing gears and how much they, um, yeah, they require. There are two different ones, longer ones and shorter ones. And also keep in mind, you, can't, you can remove them, but when you remove them, 25% of your climbing gear is lost so I would recommend take a few good spots and put them up there and just leave them okay to place this these climbing gears what you're looking for is like right here you see all these rocks and they're on the side the rest of this cliff doesn't have that so there are some places the ones I showed you earlier on that map where you can place the camping supplies uh, um, the climbing gear sorry and I think I'm not sure how this works let's figure it out I think I should take them in my hand then and come on why doesn't it let me place it That's strange. There's only one place, or now, now it works from everywhere. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. So when I press, when I click the mouse button, you put it down. So very nice. And now, as you can see in the right bottom of the screen, press E to display options. You can do this, but it also says unmount, it will cost you 25% of the units, so like I said, don't do that. Just enter. Then when you enter, you hang on this rope and you use W and S to go up and down. And then, this time we have to go up, so I press W and then after a short time, a kind of mini game comes up and this you have to counter steer all the time so make sure you don't hit the red squares on the side so try to keep it in the center oh, don't press too much because then it goes very fast try to be very gentle that's the best works the best mostly and just keep pressing W as well so you keep climbing up or down if you want to go down and then at one point it should disappear like here and then you can see in the bottom right of the screen again press E so that's what you do to get up now and also it says attempts left free when you fall one time I shall demonstrate that now I shall climb down and I won't counter stair and you can see what happens when you hit the red see then you fall okay 
Oh, and even if you're hanging still, you have to counter stairs. So, and you have uh, now two attempts left. So, and when I fail all those times, I die. So I have to, or use a med kit, or go to the tent, or or the lodge. So. Okay, we arrived in the mountains. I'm gonna show you my first. I'll show you where I started. I started here because I got some tents here, so I have options. So that's nice. And for my loadout, I actually got kind of the same loadout as I had on um, Timbergold Trails: a bow, a shotgun, and a good rifle for, in this case. The ibex. Many times you spot a nice ibex in the distance, and it's very nice that you have the option to shoot it. So now this area is also very nice and open. Many times I can hear or see them already here, but it's good to take a good look around here. And otherwise, I'm just gonna run around and listen for the sounds again. Listen, go look for the wing flapping again. Hey, there's an ibex, a male. Where's that? Oh, it's a curly. Let's execute that. How far are you? Oh, it, it called, so that should be 200 meters, I think. Yep, 200 meters. That's a tricky spot to get them, I know that, because that little thing there is quite hard to get there, so. Many times you die when you try to go there. So, but this is a nice curly, so it's worth it. And this is right away the reason why you should always take a good rifle. Mm, why don't you die? Hey, there's another one. Come on, he should go down. He goes in the right way, so with a bit of luck. Uh oh, there he should can die right there. I hope he dies in a nice place that he slides down. There he should slide down. It's the down part about these eye bags sometimes. They die in places where you can't reach them, so that really sucks. Come on, stop. When he stops he should go down, I think. Shoot him again. Where is he, by the way? When he dies there, he should slide down, so let's just shoot him again. Nice. Now, let's see. That's also a thing, by the way. As long as they keep sliding, you can keep seeing the spotting info as soon as they stop it disappears because he's dead but nice come on stop so you can see the spotting info disappear see nice now let's mark him it's also important with these things I would say just like with the big horns because this area can be very disorientating sometimes so yeah marking your kills is a good thing that way you don't lose them that often and here he is actually now that I think of it I was lucky that he didn't die from the first shot this is way faster to get him than up on that shelf where it's hard to reach so let's see he scored up to 270 the estimate so I think he will be 240 maybe 250 oh, two bad shots 254.2 that's a decent dieback I try to take a picture but sometimes it doesn't work on these hillsides so let's see This is right after I shot at Ibex, but I 
hear them here in front of me somewhere. But I can't spot them so far. I hear the wing flapping too once in a while. These guys are less noisy than the other ones, I think. It's just because they're all in one place now. Maybe it's only one, I have no idea. Let's take a little vantage point again. Now they stop making noise, so... Here I hear them again. Comes from there somewhere. Shotgun in hand, and let's run. Should be close now, right? There was one here for sure. Yeah, now I'm in the middle, probably. close now. Oh, I see one running, I think. There goes one. And these birds. There is one, right in front of me, damn. There you are. That's one. That's two. Nice. <laughs> damn, they're hard to spot. Let's see, what have we got? 0.5, a male. 27 gems. A ground shot, and this was an air shot. Point five, and this was a female. Nice. 20 gems. Okay, now there are so many tracks here, so you could assume this could be a nest or something. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait here a little bit and see if anything comes comes here hmm all of a sudden they all start flying so or they all leaving those are going in that direction there's also one coming from there it's also leaving see where they're going. There they go, there they land. Get them running. Whoa, they are here. It's a miss. I literally stepped on him. <laughs> 41 
31. That's a bit bigger. Thousand harvests with the 12 and 20 gauge. Hmm. <laughs> Third place. So, what now? Let's lay on this rock. If it lets me. This is the only rock here where you can lay on, I think. Mm hmm. And this one. And let's listen. They are still quite close. Let's see. There should be something here. Somewhere. I hear the footsteps, so we should be very close. shooting and she's landing right there or not she probably keeps running and flies away again I don't even see her hmm Now, let's wait again and listen. So far I can't find a nest or something, so... Now they are coming back. I hit him. That was more luck than wisdom, but <laughs> nice. So this time they did come back. Hmm. Where was that one? Here's one. one right there. See, again, when you're too close, you can't see the dome. It can be really confusing sometimes, so this works well sometimes. Run back, and at one point you'll see the dome. You know exactly where it is. Nice. Now, let's see if they come back again. If I really did find the nest, or that was just coincidence but they did all start flying at once so I'm curious I think here they come again I'm not exactly in the right spot, but good enough. That's the other one. Mm, the 
so far. He ran for the first bit. <laughs> Sneaky bastard. So here they land. Point six. It's a bigger one. Okay. Nice. So this rock, uh, this rock, I couldn't lay on. I think. No, nope, tried that before. But somewhere here is a better spot. He should come from that side. So if I lay down here, should be good. But I think we can assume now that they have nests. So actually, all three species of ptarmigans do have nests. That's good to know. Okay, so I think the final conclusion for all these ptarmigan species, all three of them, is locate them by sound, try to find the nests, and then execute them one at a time. That's, uh, yeah, I think that's the strategy you should take. Then I also have a little something on the dogs. First of all, the blue tick hound is useless as for tracking blood so and you shoot these guys they die or they don't but you'll never be tracking blood with the ptarmigan so next the retriever that's more yeah you can use it but that's more for if you're lazy i think so maybe if you're shooting long range with the 17 hmr then it can be useful but I don't know. And also the German pointer by the way. I tested that a lot earlier. And I had the idea it spooked more ptarmigan. So I think that could also be the case with the retriever. So, And yeah like I said already. The, the pointer. I had a good hunt with Skakers a long time ago. With the pointer and ptarmigans. And it worked perfectly I thought. But this time I tested it for quite a bit. And I had the idea it spooked more. And... When he points 9 out of 10 times you can see it because of the terrain so it was way more effective to hunt without any dogs. So my final conclusion is this actually. <laughs> but you can test it yourself if you like it it's fine but I just didn't like it so that's my opinion. Okay, and that's about it for the ptarmigans, I think. Uh, one last thing, the, the missions, also check the missions. You don't need any specific weapons or equipment for those missions, so only thing that can be tricky if you're a new player is how to get up there, but in those mountain areas, but I explained that in this video as well. And again, try the random multiplayer. Sometimes you get lucky and you find a hunt with some suitable tents where you can start that can help you pretty well so yeah that's it for this video i thank you for watching if you made it to the end because it's a long one and uh hope to see you next time